What's going on FG fam and various hockey fans? It is that time of year once again. NHL 21 Deluxe Editions have released today and the Standard Edition will drop Friday. There is nothing I enjoy more than team building, so it's time to go over the top 10 teams to use in NHL 21's franchise mode. With an odd playoff structure this past season, a list like this is very hard to make, but I think I've narrowed it down to my personal top 10 choices that would be the most fun. Of course, what you'll be viewing on your screen is base NHL 21 rosters, and I can't wait for the roster update that will actually add some big rookies and signings, which I'll kind of go over in this video for each team, of course. This list is not ordered, so I will be going in alphabetical order by team name, not city, so without further ado, let's get into it. The first selection on the list is the Chicago Blackhawks. Over the span of seven years from 2008 to 2015, the Blackhawks won three Stanley Cups and lost two Western Conference Finals. This once dominant team has gotten older and fizzled out. However, there is some young talent that is easily groomable between Strom, Debrindcat, and Nylander that can take this team back to dominance and help you build a dynasty. One issue that will need to be fixed is the goaltending situation as Crawford has moved on to New Jersey, and I'm not sure if Malcolm Subban is the future in net for Chicago, nor am I sure if they have anyone in the AHL who can be that guy. Horton and Entwistle, along with the 17th overall pick Lucas Reichel, should be interesting to watch develop and earn a spot in your NHL lineup. Be careful, though, because Chicago only has about $2 million in cap space. Overall, the Blackhawks aren't the most urgent rebuild around the league, but I know there are many Blackhawk fans out there who will look to bring their original six team back to greatness. Next, we have the New Jersey Devils. The Devils have been abysmal since losing the Cup to the Kings in the 2011-2012 season. Though, it has helped them stock up on a bunch of young talent over time. Travis Zajac is the old man on the team now, and guys like Hishier, Hughes, and Brat are the future in the Garden State. P.K. Subban is another veteran leader on the team, and they're going to need that leadership to help bring along their three top 20 picks in this past draft. Alexander Holtz, Dawson Mercer, and Shakir Mukmadulin, taken at 7, 18, and 20, respectively. They also have over 19 million in cap room to bring in some free agents if you deem that necessary. New Jersey has an up-and-coming goalie in Mackenzie Blackwood, who's only 23, and Corey Schneider is still there as the backup and veteran teacher. The Devils also have plenty of young AHL talent, so you can bring it all together. This can be an extremely fun rebuild to put together a team of youth and dominance for seasons to come. Third, we have the Anaheim Ducks. The Ducks last won the Cup in the 2006-2007 season and lost two Western Conference Finals series between 2014 and 2017. Unfortunately, like the Blackhawks, the Ducks have gotten old over time. Ryan Getzlob is 35, David Backus is 36, and Adam Henrique is now 30. If guys like Sam Steele and Max Comtois can step up and get to the next level, there may be some new building blocks. John Gibson is a great goaltender and just needs to be surrounded with a team that can help him get back in position to bring home a cup. The Ducks had two first-rounders in Jamie Drysdale at number 6 and Jacob Peral at number 27, but the farm for Anaheim doesn't appear to have much youth otherwise, so drafting's going to be imperative in a rebuild such as this. Another added challenge is the Ducks' $670,000 in cap space that will make this rebuild that much harder to navigate. I'd personally prefer if they were still the Mighty Ducks, but this is still a quality rebuild for NHL 21. The Los Angeles Kings are next on my list. The Kings won two cups in three seasons between 2011 and 2014, and they looked like they were going to be a real dynasty, but they have since plummeted to nothingness. This is yet another team on this list that in the last six to seven years have just really gotten older. Guys from those cup years like Kopitar, Carter, and Brown are now 33+, plus, and Dowdy, one of the best defensemen in all the NHL, is now 30 years old. Jonathan Quick is 34 and hasn't been the same dominant goalie for a while now. The Kings do have a bunch of guys 23 years or younger in their farm that can be groomed, but we'll have to see if any of them turn out to be even close to the talent of what their aging stars once were. 
The number two overall pick, Quinton Byfield, should certainly help them and is a very attractive part of rebuilding the Kings. But he will be much needed in this rebuild because it holds a lot of work. At least the Kings have some cap wiggle room at $14.8 million, but they really do need to start getting younger. Next up, my personal favorite team, the New York Rangers. The Rangers lost the cup in the 2013-2014 season to the LA Kings and haven't won a cup since the 93-94 year. They have definitely undergone a youth movement over the last few seasons, and it could pay off relatively soon with the right leadership. They have $17 million in cap to play with and tons of young talent to groom. Mika Zibanejad is a great cornerstone player along with Artemi Panarin. Chris Kreider is one of the few Rangers from that Cup Finals losing team, and this will be the first Rangers season without Henrik Lundqvist in net since the 05-06 season. But the Blue Shirts still hope that Igor Shesterkin can be their next elite goaltender. Rangers are looking to groom last year's number two overall pick, Capo Caco, into an elite player and have two first round picks from this season not yet added to the game's roster in the highly touted number one overall pick, Alexi Lafreniere, and the number 19 overall pick, Braden Schneider. They also recently signed defenseman Jack Johnson, which I don't think is the greatest move, but we'll see if it pays off at all. Overall, the Rangers play in the greatest arena in the world, and it would be amazing to bring a Stanley Cup back to New York City for the first time in over 25 years. The Detroit Red Wings are next on the list. They recently signed Bobby Ryan and drafted Lucas Raymond with the fourth overall pick. Raymond adds another piece of young talent to the likes of Dylan Larkin, Tyler Bertuzzi, and Philippe. Peronic. They also have guys like Cider, Valeno, and Rasmussen in the AHL who could definitely become something great. The problem with Detroit is their old and mediocre goaltenders in Jonathan Bernier and Jimmy Howard, and I don't see anything that can help them in the AHL, so whether through free agency, and they only have $10 million in cap, or the draft, goalkeep is going to be the number one priority if you're going to bring this one storied franchise back to greatness. We move on to my friend Craniac Gaming's favorite squad. Check his channel out in the description below. He does some franchise content on other games. The Buffalo Sabres. The Sabres have never won a Stanley Cup and haven't been to a Cup Final since the 98-99 season. They also haven't been to the postseason since 2010-2011. So if you're looking to get a team that would just be happy getting into the playoffs again, a Cup this is the one for you. In fact, the city of Buffalo as a whole deserves it. The Bills having lost four Super Bowls in a row in the 90s, what city could be more deserving of getting something great? This rebuild isn't just a great storyline, you could also be helping one of the most talented players in the game join Sidney Crosby and Alex Ovechkin with finally getting his title. That player is 23-year-old center Jack Eichel. Another big-time cornerstone player for the Sabres is 20-year-old defenseman Rasmus Dahlin. Surprisingly for a team that's been so down for so long, 80% of the young talent in the team is just Eichel and Dahlin. If you can get more guys like Middlestat, Cousins, and now 8th overall pick Jack Quinn to reach their top potential as well as bring in new draft picks, the sky's the limit. The issues with Buffalo are, one, their $6.8 in cap isn't a lot to add much talent without trading off some big contracts, and number two, their goalkeeper situation isn't exactly the most stable. I think Buffalo is one of the more fun and worth it rebuilds you can attempt in NHL 21. Are you up to the challenge? Three teams left, and our next one is the Ottawa Senators. The Senators had three first-rounders this past draft, including two top-five picks, bringing in Tim Stutzel at number three, Jake Sanderson at number five, and Ridley Grieg at number 28. Brady Kachuk is the cornerstone building block for the Sens at this time, and he doesn't even have elite potential in the game. Thomas Shabbat is the best defender to build around, but overall, the Senators need this year's first-rounders to work out, along with winger Vitaly Ab Abramov, who is in their system. Starting goalie Craig Anderson is 39 years old, and they will need Philippe Gustafsson to come along and quickly, and hopefully take over quickly. 
The Senators have $15 million in cap, and they will likely need some salary dumps along the way to get younger and better like they need to. What makes this rebuild really worth it is there's a lot to do here, and even though the Sens have only been around since the 92-93 year, like Buffalo, they've never hoisted a cup. The only cup that they ever went to, they lost in 06-07, and recently in the 2016-2017 season, they lost the Eastern Conference Finals. So this is another team you can build into an empire who hasn't really had success in the past instead of taking teams that have won back to glory. On to my favorite team in the Western Conference, the San Jose Sharks. Now, the Sharks have only been around since the 91-92 league year, but since the Capitals got over the hump and won their cup, the Sharks are the new team that just can't seem to get it done. They lost the only cup final that they ever participated in back in the 15-16 year and have lost four conference finals. That's not to say that this is a bad franchise at all. In the Sharks' 28 total seasons, they've only missed the playoffs seven times, only three times in the 21st century. The franchise consistently fields good rosters but just have a hard time getting over the hump. This past season, they didn't make the 12-team Western Conference playoffs. They had the last pick in the first round, which they used on Ozzie Weisblatt. And the team also traded 24-year-old forward Ryan Donato to the Bruins for a third-round pick, so they've lost some youth there. Logan Couture is on the wrong end of 30, and Joe Thornton is uh, 41. Evander Kane's good, but he's 29, and he's going to get up there soon. At right wing, Timo Meyer is a player to build around at 23 years of age, as is 21-year-old defenseman Mario Ferraro. Unfortunately, the rest of the defense, like Eric Carlson, Brent Burns, and Mark Vlasic, Mr. Pickleman, are all 30-plus. Devin Dubnik is a great goalie, but another player that's getting up there in age, and Martin Jones has good moments as well, but he's also 30. In the system, there's not a ton of great talent. Ivan Chekovic has to be good in this rebuild, and maybe Josef Karnar can be a future starting goalie. If not, there's going to be enough work here to do with the San Jose Sharks and their $4 million cap space. That'll bring us to this season's final top 10 rebuild team, the Minnesota Wild. The Wild franchise began at the turn of the century and has been to one conference finals back in the 02-03 season, their third season in the league, which they lost. Now they've been to the playoffs seven of the last eight years, but have yet to reach another conference final. Miko Koivu is 37 and is Team Grandpa. Luke Koonin is the clear building block at center for Minnesota, and at the wings, Kevin Fiala is a guy to build around at 24, and Zach Parise should be dumped off if at all possible. At 36, his $7.5 million price tag just isn't it, Chief. The Wild brought in Matt Zuccarello of the Rangers, and as much as I personally love the guy, I wouldn't be paying him $6 million per season at 33, which is kind of why he isn't a Ranger anymore. On defense, they're led by another old head in Ryan Suter, who's 35 years old, with no one currently in the system to help. Hopefully, the ninth overall pick, Marco Rossi, can change that. At goalie, they did sign Cam Talbot, who won't be shown in this roster, and hopefully that'll work out because their current goalies are either aging and mediocre or need some more time developing. Minnesota's another challenging rebuild because you need to decide if making an eighth playoff trip in nine seasons is that important to you or if you should go for some salary dumps to increase the under $500,000 cap space. No question, this team needs to get younger and cheaper. So there you have my personal list of the top 10 rebuild teams in NHL 21's franchise mode. Make sure you guys like this video, leave a comment below, let me know what team you plan on using. Also, if you want to see an NHL 21 franchise, it will be over on my second channel. If you're not following my second channel, it's called Extra FG. It will be linked in the description below. It will also be on the end screen of this video. Any suggestions you may have for what team I should use for the NHL 21 franchise mode, make sure you leave that in the comment section below as well. And make sure you subscribe if you're new to the channel. Franchise content is all we do here. We can build a winner together. And if you want to see more franchise content, make sure you click right here to see some more franchise. I feel you face somehow.